What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and in this video we're going to talk about how you can lower your cortisol levels so that you can lose weight much easier. We're going to break down what cortisol levels are, what affects them, and how you can utilize it as an actual tool to fix this to get better results in your health. Alright guys, as we break down this topic of cortisol, and how it affects your body and what you can do to use it. I'm really gonna break this video up into two distinct sections. First off is I want you to understand what cortisol is and how it affects your body, both in fat loss and weight loss, like this video is talking about, but also just your overall health in general. And then second, we're gonna get more practical and say, now that I know this, what do I do with this information? How do I actually make sure that my cortisol is lower so that I can get better results in my fat loss? First off, let's talk about what cortisol is. Cortisol is a fancy scientific way of saying stress. It's the hormone that is actually produced by your body when you are in a stressful situation. Now, it's important to understand that not all stress is bad. In fact, there's some stress called eustress that's actually really good for your body and it's necessary. If you think about this practically, if you are wanting to grow muscles, it actually requires your body going through some sort of stress and breaking down your muscles so that it can rebuild. It's the same thing emotionally. If you're trying to be a little bit more resilient or uh, handle a little bit more of a stressful situation, sometimes some amounts of stress can be very beneficial because it teaches your body how to provide resistance and to be stronger. But there becomes a line where too much stress starts to be negative and hurtful. And we have to figure out as humans and how to ride that line of not how to push ourselves too far to where we are doing damage to our body, but at the same time, not giving ourselves any stress to where we don't get anything accomplished and we don't have any strength and we become weak, you know, sedentary people. The hard part of that is actually determining what that line is of how much stress is beneficial versus how much stretch is negative. You can kind of look at it as like a fitness journey. If I am trying to be a healthy version of myself, I want to have more energy, if I want to look better, there's actually the same type of line where working out too much can actually be damaging on my body, but working out not enough doesn't get me results. And so you have to find that line of what is enough, but not too much that starts to sabotage what I really want. And the best way to figure that out when it comes to your cortisol stress hormone is to actually get it tested, to actually go to a doctor and have them test your specific level. There's multiple ways to do that. Sometimes it's best done through blood draws. There's also saliva tests that can be done to test for this. But the idea is you need to understand where is your body at and do you sit in the actual healthy range? Because if you find like me <laughs> that you sit way above what the healthy range is, you might be doing a lot of negative effects to your body. Let's talk about what some of those negative effects are. First, overarching health wise, cortisol or stress does tons of damage on your body. If you have too much stress, and again, there's a line where some stress is good and allows your body to function the way that it needs to and gets it the energy that it needs and gets it awake and alive, but a certain amount starts to cause damage. And if you're like me and you get to that certain amount where it's too much, you start to wreak havoc on the other body processes. Some things that'll happen is it puts stress on the cardiovascular system. Uh, it can cause mental health issues. You kind of just practically think about this. If you're really stressed all the time, it's really hard to keep a positive mindset and that can lead to tons of other issues. Uh, lots of eating disorders are typically triggered from amounts of stress. There's so many negative side effects. If you allow yourself to run too hot for too long, your body begins to shut down on itself because it can't sustain that level of stress or that level of output. And so if, you get that testing done, you can find where you sit in that, that range. And for me, again, I found that I was way too high and we've had to implement some strategies, whether it's nutrition and training and sleep and recovery and supplementation to start to decrease that so that I don't get in that unhealthy range so it doesn't start to sabotage the other areas of my health. Let's talk about that second piece and what the real focus of this video is weight loss or fat loss. If you're wanting to lose body fat, cortisol is like the enemy. It's the opposite of what you want. And again, there's a range, but when you start to, let's say this is normal levels and you start to push way higher, you're going to start to sabotage your fat loss. Let me give you a couple reasons why. Number one is cortisol increases your insulin resistance. So your body's ability to process carbs and sugar, as well as your body's ability to regulate cravings. So let's just stop right there. If your stress keeps going up, 
your body can't process carbs and sugar well, and you're gonna have more cravings. Big red flag when it comes to losing weight. <laughs> I don't want more cravings if I'm trying to lose weight because I, then I eat junk food. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is when your cortisol goes up, your metabolism goes down. So your body's not burning as many calories on a daily basis. It's pretty wild to think about, but if you get more stressed, your body actually starts to down-regulate that metabolism so you're not burning calories. And so you can literally eat the same amount of food but if your cortisol goes up, you start to gain fat because it's not working properly when it comes to your metabolic function, which is wild to think about is one, not only am I getting more cravings because like my insulin resistance, like I mentioned, I'm not processing carbs and sugar as well as I should, but I'm also not burning calories in the level that I should. Again, two big red flags when it comes to losing fat and losing weight. Let's talk about number three. And this one is pretty funny to me as well. If you get cortisol increased at a certain level, you actually pr begin to produce more of a hormone called ghrelin. Really funny name, sounds like a little monster, but it really is a monster. Ghrelin makes you feel hungry. It's the actual sensation of hunger that you feel in your body, basically the side effect of a hormone ghrelin. And so what we have seen in scientific studies is that as the cortisol goes up, ghrelin comes up to match it. And they're like uh, correlated directly to where one goes up, the other follows. So again, there's a third piece of that, and it's really, you know, if you put all this together, I'm about to paint the world's worst fat loss scenario or weight loss scenario is one, I am hungry all the time, ghrelin hormone. Two, I'm not processing carbs and sugar well. Three, I'm getting cravings. And four, my metabolism isn't working well and I'm not burning as many calories. That right there is all of the worst possible scenarios for you being able to lose weight. And so that's why I wanted to create this video is if you're wanting to optimize your weight loss and your fat loss so you can become the healthiest version of you, cortisol needs to be one of your biggest focus. And what we find is that most people only focus on eat less and move more to lose weight. Is that effective? It can be, but they forget there's a whole other level of is my body actually functioning properly? And if I fix this, eating less and moving more becomes a lot more simple. I don't have to keep starving myself to lose weight, I can actually allow my body to burn more calories so I can eat more and get the results that I want. So overarching wise, cortisol not only can wreak havoc overall in our health, whether it's mental health, cardiovascular disease, respiratory issues, uh, stress and cortisol can cause ulcers um, inside of our stomach. It can damage a lot of our organs. Stress just wreaks havoc on all of our body, but two, totally destroys the environment that we want for fat loss and for weight loss. And so if you're wanting to lose weight, getting your stress and getting your cortisol lower is super important again, so that you can burn calories like you need to, you're not producing too much ghrelin or hunger hormone, you're not getting cravings and your body can process carbs and sugar well. All of those are on the backside of you decreasing your stress levels. So now that you understand the value of this, let's talk about what you can actually do to regulate that hormone cortisol. So here's the deal. I could give you a million tips on how to decrease your stress levels. And I'm, I'm gonna give you a couple basic ones, but what I would be remiss if I didn't tell you is a much easier way to figure this out rather than just trying a ton of things. And it's back to what I mentioned earlier. Not only should you get your testing done to determine if you are in range or out of range when it comes to cortisol levels, testing will also tell you what you need to do to fix that. It'll tell you where maybe there's some deficiencies uh, where some things aren't functioning properly with other hormones, maybe some gut health issues. All of these things play together and can affect your cortisol levels. And so if you have that data from that testing, you can actually begin to fix those things without making massive shifts in your life. That's the most important, is once you understand what's going on in your body, you can address those specifically. But let's talk about some practical habits as well that you can implement that'll decrease that cortisol level, okay? Number one, breathe. Breathing is so key. If you will pause and force yourself to, as you take those deep breaths, it actually allows your body to better regulate itself, both in the cortisol production, but as well as the other things that affect cortisol, the other hormones that are directly correlated to it, the other body processes that interact with your cortisol production. If you breathe and get more oxygen, it allows your body to really sit in the place that it should so it can function properly. Two, 
that breathing also just calms you mentally too, which kind of becomes the circle that if my mind becomes more calm, then my body responds, and then my body produces more chemicals that my mind becomes calm. And so it kind of does both of these because you are doing a practical action that you have to mentally choose, you're calming your mind, but then there's also internal physical effects from that. A couple other big things that you can focus on once you've found out that your cortisol stress is high, is meals and movement, or the nutrition you put on your body, and how much you move and how you work out. And I've actually done total full in-depth training videos on this channel on those two specific, on how to eat to decrease stress and how to move your body to decrease stress. So if you go into the description below, I've included those links so you can access those videos. But oversimplification of that, if you don't wanna go watch those full trainings, is if you eat properly for your body, the right amount of calories, the right amount of macronutrients, the right types of food, which you can figure out through testing, your body actually begins to function the way that it needs to. Because if the other hormones and the other body processes balance out, your cortisol begins to respond to that because they're all tied together. Same thing with movement. Enough movement is actually good for your body and decreases cortisol levels. Now, again, there's a line that if I work out way too much and all day every day and don't recover, then I'm producing more cortisol than what is healthy. So again, that testing is really key and having a professional guide you through that so you know what is too much. But at the very basics, moving your body consistently actually decreases your cortisol levels so that you're not stressed. It's a good endorphin release and cortisol decrease that allows your body to, oh, now that I'm on the backside of that. And so those two things are really huge as well. And my recommendation for you is on top of watching those trainings, which I break down the nutrition and the movement much deeper and how you can really focus on those things is two things. One is get testing done, is figure out if you're actually out of range cortisol wise. And then two, if you want a practical action step to take, you're like, cool, okay, I get all this information, I get stress, is wreaking havoc on my body, and it's gonna make it hard for me to lose weight, but I really need to lose weight. What I wanna do, instead of just talking about it, and I can break down how to set up your diet and nutrition, what I wanna do is I wanna give you a free resource that actually just allows you to get started now. We'll do it for you, we'll tell you exactly what to eat. And so if you go to the description below, I've included a link to a free ebook that breaks down exactly how to set up your calories and your all of your nutrition for your body, tells you how to set up your workouts for your body, and it'll tell you how to get the testing done there as well, so you know if you're out of range cortisol-wise, and there's a bunch of other tips and tricks on how to optimize your health or performance there. So if you wanna take some action on this and you realize that, oh, cortisol's important, I probably should focus on that if I wanna lose weight, how do I lose weight? Go watch that video that I've included, some of those links, but also download that free resource so that you can just start to take some action. Hey, thanks so much for tuning into this video today. Hope it was valuable, and I'll see you on the next one.